In this video, we're going to show you how to take a brand new out of the box CGY 760R gyro and get it flight ready for your first test flight. Uh, in the 16IZ section of this video series, um, we also went over how to center your servos and also how to make sure that your CGY 760R is on the correct firmware and ready to go to be able to talk wirelessly to the 16IZ. So, refer to that video for the, the servo centering and also the uh, the gyro information setup. In that case, we don't need this. So the GPB-1 is now null and void. The only thing that you're going to use this for is for updating uh, gyro firmware as Fataba releases their free gyro updates periodically. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and plug in to the P-Box port a long enough cord um, that is going to kind of give you room for activity with the 16iz and uh, the cgy powered up but plugged together and then we're going to plug in a power supply to the cgy 760r once our t16 is turned on uh, in that 16iz video section uh, we also talked about linking the cgy 760r to the 16iz so if you are wanting to refer to that, check that video out. So the only thing that we've done now is we've checked firmware version. We're on, uh, currently in this video, it's version 3.2. Um, we know that's good and we know that we are linked. Okay, so first things first, what we're gonna do, um, if you notice, we're all powered on, um, but we changed our servos to 760 uh, microsecond mode. So what we need to do is, first things first, we gotta plug in to this SBUS port. Now, a little bit of an explanation of, okay, the CGY 760R and 16IZ and 32MZ are wireless. Why am I plugging in? The reason why is, one, you need to absolutely make sure that this CGY 760R and this 16IZ are talking on the same page and that the ID number is memorized to this transmitter. Number two is, it is, it's a very risky thing to have everything completely wirelessly. You don't want to accidentally bump something that is flight critical. Um, I can't stress this enough. I mean, if you're out there and you're, and you're playing with the radio, um, you want to be careful because you don't want to actually reverse something. You don't want to turn something off. Uh, this is one very good way uh, to make sure that your flight critical stuff are not going to cause a crash to your helicopter. Um, all of your flight tuning and all the parameters that you'll ever need to tune this helicopter and actually do wireless day-to-day -day functionality is available. So first what we're going to do is we're going to go to that user menu we made previously so we don't have to scroll through any pages. And we're just going to go gyro setting. Okay, first you're going to see two things. You're going to see start and GY settings transfer. GY settings transfer is if, say, you have two... Uh, XL power helicopters, they're set up identical. You've even matched the servo arm lengths, everything. You want to, and it's flying really good, you just want to dump all those settings into this new one so that you're good to go. All you have to do is go to that model memory, plug in the gyro, GY settings transfer, it's all in there, you're good to go, match it with this radio program, and then your helicopter's set up. Um, that's a great feature for as you start to get more CGY 760Rs on all your models, but we're going to show you how to do this from ground up. So we're going to hit start. It's going to say yes. It's currently reading what's on there now and linking the two gyros. And you're going to see that exactly like what you see on this GPB-1, that reads off right here. It gives you your runtime, it gives you your max RPM, it gives you all your gains and your degrees per second. As you tilt the helicopter, you'll see those degrees per second change, that is the maximum rate at which the helicopter had rotated at a certain point. We're going to go to basic menu. First things first, we've got 760 pulse foot servos, so we are going to just jump to that step. Swash basic, we're going to change. So if you have a standard digital servo, like a generic, most brands, uh, 285 uh, DG, Hertz is correct. If you have completely analog servos, non-digital servos, you want to run them at AN 70 Hertz. Um, if you have servos that are marked as digital 95 Hertz or digital 140 Hertz, 
do, do take note of that um, and, and make sure that you've got the right setting. Most of today's popular servos out there for helicopters, for cyclic, um, are 285 capable. Um, in this case, Fatabas have a great feature of being able to use 760 neutral. So we're going to click that, yes, and you're going to see everything is now alive. It's all going the wrong direction. We'll fix that in a second, but it's all alive. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing in Rudder Basic. And now our tail servo is alive. Okay, we're going to go back to this and we've already checked our receiver setting. Active Internal RX, fastest, we're linked on 18 channel fastest. Be sure to use 18 channel fastest for the CDUI 760R. Go back to basic, we're going to start at S bus. This is a major thing here because this is what is going to unleash your wireless setup in the future. We're just going to make sure everything is active. Aileron channel 1, elevator channel 2, throttles channel 3, rudder is channel 4, collective pitch, so CCPM mix is channel 6. Rotor head gain, which is what we assigned in the function menu, is set to channel 9. Our rudder gain is channel 5. Now all these are default this way, so um, you don't have to worry about changing this stuff. Um, your governor RPM is preset, your switch is preset. However, if you're flying an electric, what you'll do is you will go to your channel here, all the channels that are available are going to show up, you're going to hit inhibit, inhibit. If you, do, if you are using the internal governor um, or if you're using a nitro helicopter, you just leave those at default. Elevator 2 port, if you have a switch glow, a, a U-glow, any, any sort of product that you're going to plug in, you can use that Elevator 2 port to operate it. Um, it's inhibited on this helicopter, but same thing, choose whatever channel you'd like to use. Condition, um, this is what I was talking about, if you're just going to run two conditions, um, you can actually just use a DG, a digital switch. So DG1 would be assigned to that, and you would assign that to a switch position. Um, in the 16IZ uh, section of this video, I showed you how to have multiple conditions. Um, say you wanted to use all five conditions um, based off of channels. I'm going to select channel 11. And now, when I flip the switch, um, my gyro conditions are going to be toggling uh, with the switch that I assigned it to, which is in this case SE. Here is your wireless. This is the best feature in the world. Um, it allows you to completely tune this helicopter wirelessly without having to uh, plug in or use the GPB-1. Uh, the default is blank. You're just going to hit one, hit inhibit. You're going to see two consecutive channels. You can choose whatever two consecutive channels that are in here. So I'm just going to hit channel 13. It automatically assigns the next one as channel 14. And now there you go, you're, you're set up for wireless. We will check that later. Um, every time you make a wireless change, uh, the GX light on the gyro will flash. Um, so that's the best indicator to make sure that you're getting wireless changes. So one is knocked off the list, S plus basic, you're good to go. Now we're going to go into swash basic. We're gonna set up our entire rotor head. So setup style, 3D or large scale. Um, you're going to notice those two options. Um, I'm going to click 3D. Large scale is uh, for huge helicopters that have a very low head response um, and different moments of inertia. Um, for 3D, F3C, sport flying, for your, your 700, your, you know, your 450, your 200, you know, whatever you put this in, other than something crazy large like a Vario with with 1400 millimeter blades turning at 400 RPM, you know, something crazy like that, um, you'll just choose 3D. Um, gyro set direction, um, go ahead and refer to the manual because I don't have all these memorized, but, but number one um, is the gyro label is facing up. Um, you can orientate the CGY760R this way. Um, you can orientate it uh, on its side. Um, you just need to read the instructions. The labels, as long as the logo is parallel to the boom and is and is um, 
as long as the logo is parallel to the boom and uh, face up or face down, um, you don't need to change this. Um, wires front, wires back, it all, you don't have to worry about that. Um, servo type, we've already covered that when we changed them to make sure they were operating. <clears throat> Next thing is your swash plate type. Um, H3120 is CCPM mix, 120 degrees. Uh, H3140 is 140 degree or 135. I think Robo, some, some others were 135. You would use the 140. Um, 90 degree CCPM is obviously 90 degrees. Um, H400 is all four servos are operating the swash plate, but the, uh, the, the pitch elevator axis is parallel to the boom. And then H445 is when you see those helicopters that all four of the servos are at a 45 degree angle to the boom. It does all the mixing for you. H1 is basically pure. So um, if you have one collective servo that moves up, there's no CCPM mixing. It's entirely mechanical. Um, one servo for a collective, one servo for aileron, one servo for roll or for uh, pitch. Uh, servo direction number. Um, this is kind of a combo thing. So as you can see, as I move my roll stick, both my front servos are going up. As I move my pitch or elevator stick, they're all working wonky. Instead of trying to decipher that, what you can do is highlight this, move the button up. Oh, now I've got the right elevator and the right aileron. They're all in the wrong directions. Everything's reversed. Um, so what I tend to do is most of the time by going through the servo number type, you can find one where everything is in the correct direction. So in this case, my swash plate's up, my collector's reversed, so I know that one's not right. Go to three, oh, nah, that's not right. That's not right. Not right. Not right. Channel seven, oh, okay, there we go. Servo direction number seven. Swash plate's low, positive is positive, that's collective's right, roll is right, right, left, and elevator's correct, up, down, right, left. Um, so you just increase that number until you get a combination where they all work. The next parameter is your aileron neutrals, elevator neutrals, and, and pitch neutrals. Um, again, we went over this. We used our GPB-1 to make sure that all of our servos are 90 degrees. By doing that, you then adjust your linkage rods to get your swatch plate height and level neutral. And then once all that's neutral, you get your blade pitch at zero. So <clears throat> by doing that, um, it is the best way to do it in the servo rather than here because you're actually moving the entire servo span rather than a neutral point within a span. And so it's a little bit more precise, a little bit better to, to alleviate interaction. Um, in this case, my, servo, my swash plate is perfectly level because I, I did that. Um, so I leave all these at zero. If you are using other brand servos where you do need to use sub trim, um, of course, this is just, it's a trimmer. So <clears throat> if your servo is plugged into Aileron and uh, instead of using the GPB-1 and the Fataba servo to get the arm 90, this is where you would do that same procedure on those servos. Swash direction aileron. Um, if one of those servo uh, direction numbers does not work to get the correct directions, um, which, which could happen, there's nothing wrong with that. It, it may, in some certain orientations, if servos are flipped, um, something like that, um, you may need to use that. If that's the case, hold full left. You can see it reverses it without having to reverse it in the servo reverse, um, but most likely you'll find a, a servo combination that works. Um, this next value down here, and that is for, for roll, elevator, and collective. Your swash rate, this value is very important. In the manual, there is a list for a 700 size helicopter. When you are at zero pitch, everything's perfectly zero, and you give full roll. Um, check this on the roll axis, and it's very important to make sure that when you check this, your swash plate is parallel to the boom and in line with, with wherever your, your CCPM, your back or forward elevator, servo pivot is, what you'll do is you'll set that straight and then you'll go full and you'll see what your pitch gauge says. For a 700 size helicopter, you want to start at nine degrees. 
What this swash rate value does is it's, it calculates what your scaling is for all of your control inputs and your gains. So this is not your total cyclic range. So if you flew um, a previous gyro or something that said set how much cyclic you want and you flew it at 9 degrees and the helicopter slow so you bumped it to 11. Don't do that with the CGY 760. That's not what this parameter is. This is actually an arbitrary number that is used to base what the control geometry of the helicopter is. Okay. Um, so when you do this, set 9 degrees, this value may need to be adjusted slightly after you fly. And there's two really good ways to check this. If you take your helicopter off and it's pirouetting and it's not pirouetting flat, like it's, it's wobbling, it's, it's doing this while you're pirouetting, or when you do a roll, if you tend to roll the helicopter and it pitches the nose up or pulls the nose down drastically, uh, then this could be adjusted. Most likely you won't have to. The best way to check it is in that pirouette direction. Like I said, this scales the compensations, it scales the mixing that happens in the background. So, but nine degrees for most rotor blades works. Like I said, don't set this crazy high because you had in another gyro, don't set it crazy low because of a certain past experience because um, that's not what it's actually doing. Now on the contrary, the pitch rate is directly related to how much collective pitch you have. So you're going to adjust this pitch rate up and down. <coughs> you're going to go full negative, full positive. I happen to have set up one of these XL powers before, so I know that 9 degrees is actually exactly 50%, which is default. Um, on previous helicopters I've flown, I've had to set it to 65, uh, 63, 72. <coughs> um, I think a lot of the aligns are in like the 70 range um, for swash rate to get that 9 degrees. Um, also, for your smaller helicopters, that value does go down. So that's why I say refer to the manual. I believe 600 size is 8 degrees, um, 550 is 500, 550 is 7. And as you go down, you need less, so you're, you're scaling everything down. Back to pitch rate. Pitch rate is direct, though. So um, full positive, full negative, set it to whatever you like. Um, I do know that this helicopter actually at default has 14 degrees of collective. So we're going to put 14 degrees of collective in this helicopter. Okay. Next is the swash ring. This value is more like your value what you have seen in some other gyros where it's your total control rate. So as you operate this, you'll notice that now the gyro is active and you're getting way more cyclic than what you had set on your swash rate. So you're going to go to swash ring and you're going to go full negative and full back. So okay, no binding. Full positive, full up, no binding. Okay, great. I can go higher. Let's see where it starts to bind at. So I'm going to go full down. Went another 10%. Okay, no binding. No binding. No binding. Oh, okay. Well there there I'm binding a little bit. So what I'm going to do is go full up and I want to make sure that that elevator control rod isn't touching. So I'm going to go one, one down, it's still touching, two, three, four. Okay. So right there, I just reduced that value until I had no binding at full up and forward. Check all the other directions, make sure nothing's binding and you're good to go. Now if you measure your pitch at neutral stick, like I said, so now I've probably got 10, 11, possibly 12 on some helicopters uh, for full roll and full pitch. As long as that number is above 100, you're going to see a higher value. Next thing is your aileron gyro correction and your elevator gyro correction. <coughs> so with your gain turned on, or tilt the helicopter forward. Oh, okay. In this case, so as I tilt the helicopter forward, it's giving more forward. I want it to give opposite direction to try to counteract that. So on elevator, I skipped, I did it out of order, um, but aileron is first, so normal, reverse, yes. <clears throat> now when I tilt the helicopter, the swash plate is trying to level the helicopter. So it actually is trying to stay level. 
So tilt it up, giving back elevator. Now we're good to go. And now let's check roll, tilt it. Oh, now this wash plate is actually giving right roll as I tilt the helicopter right. So we need to reverse that as well. There we go. Now the swash plate is trying to level the helicopter when I roll it in the opposite direction. Stick direction aileron. All you do is hold full right. And in this case, um, since we didn't change anything in the transmitter, it's already set. But still, sanity check. Let's reset it. Full right, <coughs> touch right. It's going to say, are you sure? Yes. You've now memorized right direction control. Stick direction elevator, back, that is back elevator. So back means uh, like a backflip. So up elevator, up elevator for airplanes, I guess is what we call it. So back elevator, click yes, sure. <clears throat> now it's all memorized. All of your compensation directions are set and you're good to go. The next one is you need to set your high, low, and zero pitch. So, okay, we know this is our, our full negative. Are you sure? Yes. Go to pitch high, full positive. Are you sure? Yes. Pitch zero. Okay, we're going to look. <coughs> I'm going to set everything at zero. Yes. So now our swash basic is set up and is good to go. We're going to go ahead and move on to our rudder or yaw. Uh, we've already changed the servo type. <coughs> So next thing, we just need to make sure that the correction direction is correct. So we're just going to move the helicopter. I'm going to turn the nose right. And the correction should be the opposite direction. So that means increasing pitch to give nose left in, the, in, in that direction. So as I turn it, I'm actually increasing pitch to the right. So it would start pirouetting faster. The compensation is reversed. So normal. Reverse, yes, okay. Now when I turn the nose left, it is increasing pitch to push the nose right. So that is set. Endpoints, um, work mode is uh, CMT. Um, you, CMT is heading hold, so this is normal, just purely rate mode. You want to leave it in CMT, which is both. You can, you can change from normal to rate in your uh, condition setting. If you never want to use rate mode, you can always set it to AVCS only. Uh, GY gain, AVCS, um, this is essentially your base gain. 100% means that your range is 100%. Same thing with normal, range is 100%. Um, some helicopters at a very low head speed with a low tail rotor ratio might want more gain. Um, if you're running your transmitter gain at 100%, but your tail still refuses to wag or is not holding perfect, uh, you can increase GY gain AVCS, which will give you more overall gain. Servo limit. Um, this is the exact same as is kind of like your swash ring um, in your swash plate setup. So full right, full left. Make sure that nothing's binding. Sounds like mine is binding just a touch with right, so I'm just going to lower that a few points. And you heard the servo stop humming, so that means that our endpoints are correct. We're going to check the left. Okay, so now I can go full right and nothing binds. Our limits are set. Um, this is also where we want to check our correction, our, our input direction. So as I give right rudder, the tail rudder should increase pitch to push the nose right. Push the tail left, push the, push the nose right, which it is doing. If it is backwards, um, what you'll do is you'll go into your linkage menu, servo reverse, and you will re reverse channel four, which is rudder. That is outside of this um, gyro settings menu. Okay, the next thing we'll do is governor. Um, same thing with throttle. If your throttle servo, if, if your throttle servo is operating backwards, go to your linkage menu, reverse throttle, channel three. That is outside of the, the gyro settings menu. In this case, I am actually using an internal governor, so um, I would select inhibit. 
um, if you were using a nitro helicopter or the internal CGY 760R uh, governor for your electric, um, you'll need to put in your gear ratio. You'll need to put in, if it's an electric motor, your pole count. If it is a nitro motor, leave the pole count at 2P, so just default. Um, your servo type is analog or DG1520. Uh, if you are running an external electric governor, um, refer to your, your ESC's menu, um, but most of them run on analog. Um, if you are running a throttle servo for nitro, uh, DG1520 is most likely if you're running a digital servo. Okay, stick switch. This is the percent at which the governor turns on. So in this case, um, I have a flatline throttle curve, so it is not going to work. But um, if you had a nitro curve where it's perfectly linear, um, as you turn this on, you will see that green go solid when the governor's on. If you want to reset that position, just hold this button down, it resets it. In this case, I've got 100% throttle curve, 50%, and obviously it goes to zero, you can see there. <coughs> so that is controlling when the governor turns on and off by the stick. The on-off switch, if you have that assigned to a channel, I've inhibited it, but um, if you have that assigned to a channel, you can turn that on and off as well and assign that channel to a switch to turn the governor on and off if you need to. The battery failsafe, um, you, can, you can turn it on. Um, that is if your receiver battery becomes low, um, it will automatically cut the throttle for you. And, and to what percent it cuts the throttle, which is default 50%. Your limit set, idle, so wherever your nitro engine would idle or wherever your low limit for your ESC is, uh, you would hit set and that will memorize that. It will automatically highlight limit set high, go full throttle or wherever 100% fully uh, throttle barrel open uh, or ESC 100% throttle and set. Um, so you will need a, in that case you would run a, a flat uh, straight linear curve straight up again. Uh, limit test, uh, be very careful with this on an electric helicopter. Um, this does test your limits high and low. On a nitro, it's great if you take your motor out and you put your motor back in, but you don't want to reset your limits because you think they're the same. Uh, you can just tap idle and the throttle barrel will go to idle. You can tap high and the throttle barrel will go to high. Sensor type, um, this is where if you're running different electric motors, um, the nitro is obviously if you're running a nitro engine you would select nitro. If you have just a magnet in say a one to one ratio magnet in your main gear for your electric if you're not using the RPM uh, phase sensing. Um, if you're not using a phase sensor, if you're not using uh, the built-in phase sensor in the electric motors or electric speed controls uh, and you have just a magnet on the main gear uh, you would choose one to one magnet. Um, low pole electric motor uh, the internal operation is a little bit different for a lower pole electric motor, so um, in this case I believe it's six poles or lower, um, which is very few motors out there. If it's six poles or lower, you want to choose low pole electric. If it's high pole, so six poles or higher, you'll choose high pole electric. Um, in this, you have your governor gain, your low RPM limit, and your limit high RPM. Um, I would not suggest adjusting these at all unless you are running a very unique setup. Um, this governor gain here, if you hear your, your throttle or your ESC chattering, you would lower. Um, if it is not holding RPM and sagging and then ramping back up, you would need to raise that gain. Uh, your low limit RPM, uh, so this is, this is a little bit confusing. The low limit is, I believe, 1500 below. So 1500 RPM or below, you can choose what percent that the throttle will, will pull back to. Your, your limit high RPM is what percent that will throttle back to, so above 1500 RPM. Uh, this is your telemetry, so the, this page 6 of 6 is your, is your RPM telemetry that will show up. We've already set that up in the, C, in the T16 in the other uh, video part of the series. Um, in this case, we're going to go ahead and turn it active and the slot number is 2N, which it automatically defaults to, so just leave that where it's at. Um, in this case, I have an electric, so I'm going to deactivate it, and you'll notice all that stuff disappears. However, I am going to change my gear ratio to the correct gear ratio for this helicopter, which is 10-6.
and my pull count for this motor is 10. So I'm going to increase that to 10. And you'll notice everything else is pretty much missing since you're not using it. You'll just have blank screens. On the page uh, 6 of 6 um, is your, your revolution sensor. So if you want to check if you have a motor, um, if you have a uh, ESC plugged in and turned on and you turn your motor, uh, you'll be able to see the percent change. If you're using a magnet on a nitro engine or a crankshaft uh, position sensor, as you turn it, you'll be able to see this reading. If you're using the Fataba magnetic sensor, um, make sure that it reads above 90% when you are above the magnet. If you're using a crank sensor, I believe it just sits at 21%, so um, that's just how that one works. It's just going to deep display at 21%, which is fine. Okay, um, we're just going to kind of touch on this flight tune section. Um, in a different video series, we will actually do real flight tuning where um, you'll see the helicopter. We're going to tune it. We're going to show you exactly. We'll put it in a situation to where you would need to tune something. Um, but I would suggest taking the helicopter off in complete defaults and do your first test hovering on those defaults. Base gain here is your overall gain. It's the exact same as the GY gain on the tear rotor. Um, it's, your, it's your gain span, so if you have a helicopter that you're at 100% gain and it still feels like it needs more gain, um, you can increase that amount. Your cyclic rate. This is how fast the helicopter will roll and flip when you are at full stick. Um, this value is in degrees per second and it does not change how quickly it gets there, it does not change the gains, all it does is it changes what it tries to reach when you give full stick. Default is 300 degrees a second, most 3D helicopters out there can reach 300 degrees per second, most blades can reach 300 degrees per second. Uh, if you are noticing that your helicopter is not reaching 300 degrees per second, uh, it is most likely either the swash ring value um, is not high enough and you're not getting enough cyclic throw. Um, that's not swash rate, that's swash ring. Um, if, if you're not reaching that, and say, say you're, you're running very stable or heavy, generally heavy blades, um, you might not reach 300 as well. Um, if you turn this to, say, say default is 300, you say, well, I want a faster helicopter, and I turn it to to 420. Most rotor blades on the market and most 700 size helicopters or even some of the smaller like 450, 500, 450s will go pretty fast, um, 500, 550, 600, uh, it will not reach that. If you set this higher than what the helicopter can actually reach dynamically, um, all it'll do is it'll just continue to hold full to try to reach that, but it never will. Um, so remember to set that one while you're flying within the constraints of the helicopter. Control authority aileron and control authority elevator are how quickly it reaches that previous rate. So does it immediately lurch to 300 degrees per second and get there? Does it ramp up to 300 degrees per second? Does it overshoot 300 degrees? Does it overshoot 300 degrees per second and then stabilize at 300 degrees per second? That's what this value does. Uh, 40 is, is a fairly linear, um, value. If you want the helicopter to slowly, slowly reach your commanded rate, you would lower the value. If you want it to accelerate but not keep on accelerating and then reach that rate and then hold constant, you would raise that value. Um, exponential is exactly what it is. It's an expo curve for the stick control. So if it is too sensitive off-center, not accelerating too quickly, that is control authority. If it's just generally nervous and too too quick off center for you, um, but you like your overall full stick rate and you like your acceleration to full stick, um, that expo value is either going to soften it or make it more sensitive. Um, on Fataba, negative is less sensitive, positive is more sensitive. Flight style, um, I think the best way to describe this is the lower the value, the more fluid the helicopter is going to feel. So a little bit more kind of um, power steering where you're not going to get a whole lot of feedback. Um, it's kind of real loose and fluid and you, you're not going to see a whole lot of uh, directional changes. They'll be real nice and glossy. The higher the value you go, the more robotic um, or rigid the helicopter is going to be. And as you're coming out of a loop or you're doing a roll, 
you're going to have to more kind of break it free. Um, that's the best way I can describe that. Um, that value is not dangerous to play with, so run it up and down. Most of these values in here in this flight tuning, they're not dangerous. Run them up and down, see what you like. The, the spans are set so that you, you're not going to get yourself in, a, in trouble. Of course, if you turn your cyclic rate too low, you, you might run out of cyclic, but the rest of them, play with them, see what you like. Elevator pre-comp is used um, if, say, the, the nose is, is lifting um, and the nose is dropping as you give it, uh, quick collective commands. Um, there might need to be a little bit of feed forward compensation. That's what that is. As you increase, as you increase this value, you'll see with negative pitch, the helicopter gives back to keep the nose from dropping. With positive pitch, it gives forward to keep the tail boom from dropping or the nose from rising. One other um, thing that is very useful, if you ever want to go to default on any parameter, hold the button down and just hold it there and it resets. So in that case, I've got 70% elevator pre-comp. Man, I, I made a change. I forgot what default was. I want it to go back to stock. I want to start over. Highlight it, hold the value down, it'll go back to default. HP authority is high pitch authority. As you increase the angle of attack of the blades or as your motor loads or something like that, your rotor disc becomes less responsive. This is a gain boost to make sure that as you load the helicopter and as you fly the outer, outer pitch ranges, the helicopter still feels tight. If you're flying around and you feel that it's a little bit loose, um, raising the at full pitch, um, but it feels good around neutral, raising that will help. So that's your flight tune menu. That is everything ready to go. Um, the one thing that I want to show you is if you do run into your positive and negative pitches are not completely equal, all you need to do is go into your pitch curve and if you have full negative and full positive, if say your positive is a little bit off, most likely it's not a setup issue. Um, most rotor heads have a little bit of built-in differential from the swash plate to the rotor head. If, say, your positive pitch is more than your negative, all you need to do is highlight that top one till it's red, change the rate, lower it down. It's probably be somewhere between 10%, uh, up to about 10%. If it's more than that, I would start looking at something, making sure your swash plate's in the right spot. Um, but it's pretty normal. You would lower that. <coughs> Go back to your gyro settings, swash plate basic, and you'll notice that, so I took it down 5%. Now my pitch is saying high is 1121. I'm going to memorize that. Now it's all equal, everything's equal, and that's no big deal. Um, and at this point, your helicopter is ready to go out there and fly for the very first time.